Okay, so a tight monetary policy is going to tighten up the amount of money that's being injected into the economy, right? And it's actually going to pulse. It might even pull some of that money out, right? What is ultimately going to, to happen? If they tighten up the money enough, then it's going to cause the aggregate demand curve to move left, okay? Loose monetary policy would cause it to move right. But this is, this is tight monetary policy, so it's causing it to move left. So if we are starting right here and move left, what's happening to that intersection point? So I'm starting here. It's changing. Or it's changing. It is changing, but yeah, which change. direction? To the left. Starting here. To the left. No, no. The aggregate demand curve is moving left. The intersection point. Hold on. Let me draw you the oh, intersection okay. point. Yeah. Here, here's the intersection point right now. Okay. And then here's the aggregate demand curve moving left. Where's the intersection point? Lower. Lower. Okay. Yes. So what's happening? So sometimes what we do yeah. is we tend to drop it like this. We make it go down. But that's not what's happening. It's moving left. So as it moves left, the intersection point, right? The intersection point is what's changing. So the intersection point was up here. This was the average price. Now the intersection point is down here. This is the new average price. Okay. And so as we, as we move to the left, the average price is doing what? It's going down. It's decreasing. It's decreasing. So what is that? Deflation. That's deflation. deflation. Now, in this case, the output did not change. Well, why not? Why didn't the output change? Well, because we're on the perfectly, um, we're on the perfectly inelastic per portion of the curve. So that's why the output didn't change. So, I mean, is this good deflation or bad deflation? Well, that's a little bit tricky because it, it, it's still bad deflation because it's the aggregate demand curve that's doing this. But it, it, since they're on the perfectly elastic portion, or excuse me, perfectly inelastic portion of the aggregate supply curve, then you don't really see a change in, um, in output. And that's actually why they would tighten up the monetary policy because they, what they would say is they would say, okay, we were sitting right here and we had a very loose monetary policy. We allowed people to really borrow money very cheaply and stuff like that. And it caused the aggregate demand curve to shift to the right. And our prices have really started to go up, but we haven't seen any increase in output. So we want to back that down a little bit by getting that aggregate demand curve to shift to the left. Okay. That way we don't really decrease any output, but we don't, we don't have that inflate. A little awkward because in reality, in reality, here's what's actually happening. What's actually happening is they're not really trying to shift the curve left. What they're actually doing is they're trying to slow down how fast it's shifting. So, um, so if we're sitting here and they go, okay, in six months, we went to here. Then what they're going is they're trying to say, okay, we don't want it to be way up there in six months. In six months, we only want to be about right here. So we really need to back off because we've been moving a little bit too fast. Now, why did they move so fast? Well, maybe the curve had been all the way back here, which means we're way back here. Our intersection point is way back here. And they're saying, we want to increase output. We know that's going to be a little bit, cause prices to go up a little bit, but that's okay because we're also increasing output. But if we keep going, so let's lower interest rates, they say. Let's get interest rates down to like 1%. And they go, okay, that will spark the economy. And the aggregate demand curve starts moving to the right. And they get to about right here and they start going, ooh, maybe we ought to raise interest rates a little bit because 1%, if we keep that up, it's going to keep moving pretty quickly. And so they stay, say, we really need to slow this down by raising the interest rates up to 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, whatever. And so they start, you know, tightening up that monetary policy to try and slow down how fast that aggregate demand curve is moving to the right. We in econ do tend to think of it much more simplistically. Loose monetary policy moves it right. Tight monetary policy moves it left. 
um, but it's a little bit more nuanced in the real world where it's actually about how much, you know, how fast it's moving right and how, and, and, and stuff like that. Now, right now, with everybody staying at home, the demand curve is definitely moving left. And so we are seeing, you know, far less output. And so you should see prices drop and things like that. And, and ultimately, I mean, you would. But at the same time that that's happening, they're trying to do things, both fiscal and monetary policy, to try and get that curve to not keep moving left. They want it to move back to the right. And they want to get it moving nice and steady back to the right again. And so from a monetary perspective, the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates. From a fiscal perspective, um, Congress started sending out $1,200 checks earlier this week. All right. And so that was just to get money into people's hands so that people will start spending it somewhere. If you're on the horizontal, which is the perfectly elastic portion, then you are right. If, you, if it's on that portion, then the price does stay the same until we get to about here. Then as we move right, we start to see, even though output is increasing, we start to see an increase in average prices. We start to see some inflation. Um, but if you're on that horizontal part, then, then no, we, we, don't, we don't see that. 